In this video, we're going to talk about Airbnb's new host coverage, AirCover. What exactly is Airbnb's AirCover? What does it do? What does it not do? What are the main changes since the last host guarantee update? Some pros and some hidden cons that you need to know about because there is a hidden piece of language in here that is going to cost you money if you're not prepared. So by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly how to use this insurance kind of like an insurance policy on Airbnb. Let's jump right in. Welcome back, Airbnb family. So for those of you who don't know me, my name's Sean Rockijic. I'm a professional Airbnb host. I've been teaching for about five years, hosting for about seven. On Airbnb, I've made a little over $10 million on the platform. I've got about 120 properties and my business is automated. There's a girl named Haley who runs all my stuff. So yes, you can automate an Airbnb business. But in this video, I wanna to talk to you about this insurance policy or this coverage policy that Airbnb provides. It's important that you understand it because the majority of your losses on Airbnb can be resolved through Airbnb's host guarantee, now known as Airbnb AirCover. So let's go over what it is. Please like the video. Let's go. First, you need to understand that AirCover is now this new branded type of coverage. The host guarantee was a branded type of coverage too, where Airbnb says to the world, we've got you covered. Now, this has always been one of their main competitive advantages. If you think about VRBO or booking.com or any other place that you could put your home on, like on some website for someone to book your place, Craigslist, no other place has ever covered a home so comprehensively. But even the host guarantee for the last five, seven years in my experience has not been complete. And there's been a couple big complaints that have led to this new iteration of coverage called AirCover. And Airbnb wants you to know all about it because this of course is a very expensive move for them. And if they're gonna spend so much money on coverage, they wanna get new hosts. This is all about keeping and winning new hosts. So what is different since the host guarantee? Well, the host guarantee covered damage in large. That was really their focus, which means that you could have excessive cleaning or smoking covered if you could argue it as damage. And this is something that we've always been talking about on this channel is like how to properly submit a resolution in the language that Airbnb would accept it. Now in the background, Airbnb has been covered by an insurance company called Generali. And when a guest gets injured, Airbnb's own internal insurance policy coverage would cover that. It seems now that AirCover will not only just cover $1 million in damages, but they'll also take over guest liability. This is something that Airbnb has been covering on the back end. You probably saw some stuff about the black box kind of trust and safety team stuff. There's been a lot of drama in Airbnb's history of like resolutions and all these allegations of covering up things that they wanted to keep out of the media. But what you can distill from that bit of media that you've seen is that they have been covering guest damage damages, guest injury, stuff to the guest where the host could have been liable, maybe. But everybody goes after Airbnb because they're the ones with the deep pockets. So Airbnb is finally enveloped into their brand, AirCover, that they cover guest damages to, not just yours, to make you feel more safe about if a guest gets injured or something bad happens, that they're gonna step up and cover it so you don't find yourself liable. And this is really important for the brand of AirCover because a lot of hosts lately and a lot of owners of properties lately have been so worried about like, what if a guest trips and falls and stuff like that. So this welling of like, guest danger sentiment is being quelled by Airbnb's air cover. Now Airbnb also covers a couple things that they used to not. They are outright covering smoking fee violations and pet fees. So Airbnb would allow you to put a pet fee and would allow you to say that there's no smoking, but in order to collect fees, you'd have to collect them up front. So if a guest was going to bring a pet, you'd have to collect the pet fee before the guest arrived. Airbnb's trust and safety team and every you know guest experience manager I've ever talked to, resolution manager, has always said, if somebody arrives and the reservation starts and they bring a pet, it's already too late to charge the fee. Well, Airbnb's air cover changes this now. They will guarantee you a pet fee if you list it in your property. They will guarantee you an excess heavy cleaning fee and they will guarantee you a smoking violation. Um, and this is great because now, in, if you're not good at the resolution process, if you're not this tenured professional host who knows how to keep their paperwork tight, you can finally get paid for people smoking. As long as you get a photo of the contraband, right? As long as you have a photo of some ashes or cigarette butt or a roach, a roach or something, this is the stuff that Airbnb just needs to see and they'll expedite the case, which is great. Now, this stuff 
is what starts to get a little bit sticky. There's actually this hidden dark side to these two guarantees that a lot of hosts need to understand. Fortunately, the cons of Airbnb's air cover seem to be confined to just the cap on paying out on excessive cleaning fee and on the non-smoking violation fee, which I'm about to explain. But I do also need to tell you that at the end of this video, there's another part that I need to cover. There's a big misunderstanding about Airbnb's billing for loss of potential income. It's one of their newest and most controversial features of AirCover, which is that Airbnb will pay you if you lose money because you can't host a guest because somebody else damaged your property. But a lot of people have been trying to get paid for this and they're doing it wrong. So. Stay tuned to the end if you wanna get paid for lost income because it's kind of a sticky thing. It's brand new and most people don't get it. But for this cap on the cleaning fee and cap on the smoking fee, uh, what we need to tell you, what I think you need to understand is this is great for small properties, but bad for big, okay? so. In the case that you have studio apartments, which a lot of my properties are studio apartments, when we have to pay a housekeeper for extra cleaning, it might be a few hours of cleaning. Um, if we have to remediate the smoke from an apartment, it might take us three or four hours of extra cleaning and you know using some ozone machines and stuff like that. This is fine for us because the $250 cap, standard statutory cap on extra cleaning or on this non-smoking violation fee, that is in line with smaller properties. But Airbnb's flat rate approach is largely putting off larger properties. If you have a four bedroom or five bedroom mansion or cabin or just some luxury property on the water, what can happen is if somebody throws a rager and trashes your place, that cap on heavy cleaning becomes a sunk cost because you might have to pay an extra 400 or $500 for a cleaning company to come in and make this trashed party house ready. And with the non-smoking violation fee, again, with a larger property, the number of machines that you might have to use to remediate the air and filter out the air and clean the space, renting that much machinery can get expensive. And the amount of like hand cleaning that you might need to do in order to remove the smoke smells as far as upholstery cleaning, cleaning the walls and stuff like that can get really expensive too. So the real only cons that I see to Airbnb's air cover is this cap is leaving out the largest properties to really fend for themselves if they can't keep their remediation costs under control. I did do a previous video with a hack that you can use to clean out and filter out or scrub, you could say, the air in your house for much cheaper than renting expensive equipment. I really do believe that moving forward because of air covers cap on the smoking fee that you should own your own remediation equipment when it comes to air scrubbers or air movers. This video that I'm gonna put in the description or in the corner is an extremely inexpensive way to get your hands on some gear to clean that air. So use something like this in order to keep your costs lower so you can really focus the $250 per you know, violation on like the hard labor stuff, like if it means you know, cleaning upholstery or cleaning walls. Airbnb has done something else that is extremely significant when it comes to air cover, which is the timeline to file. Now, a lot of people were complaining that if they did a resolution asking a guest to pay for some damages, that the guest in retaliation to that resolution request would then leave a negative review because they didn't think it was fair that they were getting charged for staining sheets or breaking plates. Well, the host should not have to pay for every single broken dish or plate because they feel hostage to the review. And Airbnb has finally met hosts where they are in that fear. You have up to 14 days to file. You can create a draft. As soon as a guest leaves, you can start uploading photo documentation, getting all that stuff in a row, all that time sensitive material that you should upload right away anyway, but you can keep it as a draft, have it in your back pocket, try to get the guest to review you first, and then file the resolution once the review is out of the way. This is extremely important. We've tried to find multiple ways to navigate around this. It used to work and then Airbnb put a, like a huge kibosh on us about a year ago where we had to have the like resolution finalized before the next guest checked in, which became extremely problematic. So even if other guests are checking in over the course of 14 days, you still can delay that resolution request as long as all of your paperwork, all of your documentation is in the system like time stamped, uploaded original stuff before the next guest checks in, you should not have any issues. So best practice is treat it just like the old policy of getting everything uploaded before the next guest checks in, but just save it as a draft. Get the guest to leave your review, be really sweet and kind, make it just about the reservation experience. Don't bring up that they've done anything wrong. Don't like throw any negative wording at them yet and then get them to review mutually and then say, hey, by the way, thank you so much. Um, be the last order of business, we did find broken plates or we did see that you were smoking or you violated our occupancy rules and you threw a party, XYZ, bring it up then and then say this is the cost for those damages. 
then Airbnb will try to collect from the guest. The guest can complain and throw a fit all they want, but the review process is already done. And if Airbnb can't collect from the guest, if it's covered by AirCover, you now can get paid, which is really nice. Now, let's get to that one cool new thing that everybody wants to know about, which is lost income. This is something that most people get a separate insurance policy for. Lost income is like, say, a pipe burst. And when that pipe bursts and then you go and shut down your Airbnb listing and you can't take new guests, you will lose all that potential income. Now, this is the one that's great for big properties and not so good for smaller ones. It's kind of reverse to the whole smoking fee thing. Let me explain. In order for you to get paid by Airbnb for lost income, you have to have an active Airbnb reservation and you have to have to cancel that reservation because of the damages caused by a previous guest. So if you do not yet have any reservations or your reservations are not on Airbnb, then those cancellations that are caused or that inability to book new business will not be covered by AirCover. If you cancel a VRBO reservation or if your calendar is just empty, Airbnb has no liability to pay you for lost income. But let's say you have a jacked full calendar, just a wonderfully full calendar, and a guest breaks a pipe or breaks a king size bed or destroys the couch or smokes so bad that you can't get the smoke smell out for a couple of days. If you have to cancel any reservations on Airbnb due to that guest's violation, you can then seek those damages through Airbnb's air cover, right? Now, the reason why this is better for bigger properties is because bigger properties tend to book much further in advance and their calendars fill up more consistently if you do pricing strategy appropriately. Now, with that said, Smaller properties tend to book more last minute. And if you manage your pricing strategy well, you can still get booked in a good pipeline, but the lead time, and lead time is how many days in advance people tend to book, inner cities like Dallas, lead time might only be three or four days in advance. And a lot of times we get same day bookings, a lot of the time. But with our properties that are a three bedroom or larger, we tend to see lead times of like four or six weeks out. Even on VRBO or HomeAway, that's six months or nine months out. So you're much likely to have back-to-back -back bigger bookings when you have a bigger property based on just regular pricing dynamics. If you do a good job with your pricing strategy though, like following the pricing strategy from this YouTube channel, you can have 100% occupancy on your studios. And then if somebody smokes and destroys your property, you can cancel those reservations and then get paid for them. So moral of the story is you have to have active Airbnb bookings that are getting canceled to still get paid for those ones specifically. If you don't have any future revenue on the books when damage happens, Airbnb won't cover you. And last note, it is worth saying, we used to have to be extremely vague on damages due to pets. Airbnb used to not cover pet damages. And this is something that's kind of interesting. If a stain was on the floor because a dog wet the floor, or if a couch was chewed up because a dog chewed up the couch, if you told Airbnb that a pet did this, even if the guest brought an unauthorized pet and they chewed up something, Airbnb would not cover it because they did not cover pet damages at all. So you'd have to just say the guest damaged this thing or the guest damaged the carpet and you would have to exclude that you knew specifically that they brought an unauthorized pet or something like that. Um, and that was really weird um, to have to be so completely vague in order to get paid. It was like a little thing that we all had to dodge. We don't have to do that anymore. You can say, yes, this person brought a chihuahua and the chihuahua chewed up my nanny's favorite nightstand thing or whatever. And you'll get paid for that now finally. So that's great. So all in all, I'd say 8.5 out of 10 is my review of air cover, 8.5. The only thing we really need to work on is that cap on the smoking and cleaning fee for the larger properties. I think if they looked at the average cleaning for a property, let's say a, you know, a house is like $350 to clean in California per turnover, then they could raise that statutory minimum up to meet some multiple of the base cleaning, right? Because if they're gonna give me $250 per property in excess cleaning or 150, let me post that somewhere here. Um, but my typical cleaning costs are only 45 bucks. That's a huge multiple compared to my 45 where somebody else is legitimately paying $400 to get their luxury home cleaned. 250 doesn't go very far, right? So that's my only thing about air cover that I think that can improve. Otherwise, I think they're making great progress. Of course, this is new, it's innovative. There's more that can be done too, um, like allowing a guest to have trip insurance through air cover, right? Where they send a guest a link and they can book trip insurance. Stuff like that. I think we're gonna to continue to see progress and I think Airbnb is on the right track because in this space, in order to run a good platform like Airbnb, VRBO, you know, homeawaybooking.com, 
in order to run the best platform peer-to-peer -peer service, you need to really be focusing on the service providers, the ones that drive the product and make the money. If the providers leave, it doesn't matter if you have customers, if there's nothing to book, right? So Airbnb, you're on the right track. Thank you so much from hosts everywhere around the world. We really love what you did. Any of you who have any special stories you wanna share about your experience with Aircover or other cool ideas you have for Airbnb, um, Brian Chesky's been asking. So um, feel free to put it in the comments. Love you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And as always, I'll see you on the other side.